So guys, welcome back once again to Finding Bigfoot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of getting obsessed with this game. And I'm getting obsessed with the stories that you guys are leaving in the comments because I did ask in the previous episode if anyone has any really weird stories and stuff. Like, it doesn't have to be from maybe what you think was a Sasquatch, but any weird stories of anything that you could have seen. I'm just being careful here because I've never tried this before. Is that gonna block me off? Over. Okay, we're golden. I wonder if we can use that. Fucking deer over there. Okay, but like I was saying, there was a lot of comments from you guys who had experiences. Some people were more careful than others in the way they said it, like their choice of words and stuff. Again, guys, there is no judgment on this channel. It doesn't matter. If you think you saw something, then only you can be the person who decides what you saw. It's that simple. Like, I'll say it again. This creature, that this elusive creature people are still hunting for, that's actually really cool the way it goes up like that. It has not been proved to be real or fake yet. God, this would be such a cool spot to hide from it. But, if the creature could get up this, the log would either break and it'd be certain death down there. And there's no other way out of this, like I can't jump down to either side. There's a tower there, though. Where are we now? I don't think I've ever been here before. But some of the stories that you guys left in the comments, I'm not joking. How you guys don't have nightmares about stuff like that? And some of you guys actually live, like, right on the edge of the forest, too. I mean, I understand if, like, you've been living there all your life and you're so used to it, you know, you kind of almost it's, it's almost like acclimatized to the sounds i know that's like the wrong word but you, you get used to the sounds of everything like you know what sounds are from which animal or you know if it's if it's tree creaking and stuff so in my opinion the best cases are from people who've lived there all their lives sometimes even skeptics can be the best source of information for anyone that wants to find the truth behind this there's actually a study that wasn't too old i actually think i saw it like what was it, four, four or five weeks ago when I stumbled across a documentary which I'm going to tell you guys about very, very soon. But somebody said, and it was actually a very well-known scientist, I'm going to do that YouTube thing, guys, where I can't think of the scientist, but if I do, I'll probably post it on my Twitter. But this person is a scientist slash, and uh, I think it's an part-time anthropologist, but this person said that a Bigfoot could be, or a Sasquatch, could be related to a creature which did exist and has somehow survived the test of time. And the creature that it was related to, I'm gonna get this name wrong, I'm gonna butcher it, but I think it's one that's in Ark Survival Evolved called a Gigantopithecus, which was a bipedal creature and one of the biggest primates of its time, or in fact, ever. So if there was ever gonna be a King Kong, I think that would be it. Okay, I'm actually testing a couple of things while I'm in this area. If you remember this place, this is where we were in episode one, and somebody said that I missed something. But I don't know what I could have missed. Maybe it was a body or something, but I'm pretty sure that they move, depending on, you know, when you change your game. Because there still is no save, as far as I can tell. The same person also said that these lights go out in this cabin during the daytime. But they don't seem to be doing it for me. Maybe you have to do a certain sequence or something. A couple of minutes ago, the creature just announced itself, and I'm a little bit worried because this is a bottleneck, so I've loaded the track bullets into the rifle. I'm trying to listen out, too. Somebody actually left a really interesting comment in the previous episode saying that I should keep my flashlight off. Because if you're working off the logic of this being a creature which isn't used to any source of light, you know, aside from the sun, it would hurt its eyes and it might make it charge. Especially if it's a nocturnal creature, so I like that. I'm gonna use it. So you can see, flashlight off. I'm gonna keep going in this direction too. Okay guys, so quick update. I just found a watchtower over in that direction just past the bridge. And like an idiot, I tried to climb it so I could get a better vantage point to shoot the creature with one of the tracker bullets. I fell off and it took a load of health off, so now I need to get back to the trail to get some more. So I just saw something then behind that tree. Wait, is that? You guys see that just above the dot? Is that Bigfoot leaning over? I 
I think it's a bush. I don't know, I can see. It's a fucking bush. Okay, so we made it back. I'm not joking, guys. Try playing this game without using the flashlight. I don't know, it seems to be working so far. Like, it's not... The creature's not charged me yet. Like, even when I fell off the uh, the watchtower just over there, my my character let out, like, a, a little bit of a, a whimper, but nothing came to attack. And it does say in this... If you read it, there's there's a few mistakes, but if you read it, it does say that a Bigfoot can sense when there's an injured animal, which in that case, we would have been. All right, let's get some more health. I don't need it, but I need some that I can use if need be, so. I still haven't fired a single shot yet. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've not used any of the cameras either. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna place one facing that way, because I've got a feeling, I don't know what it is, I've got a feeling something's going to come from that way. And I think it's not a bad idea to place one here too. I've actually seen comments from you guys saying that Bigfoot does attack the trailer too. So you know what we might do? We might just stay around this area. This is pretty open ground. He's here. He's here. I guess this is going to be the test to see if it charges with or without the flashlight. Where are you, big bitch? I managed to get the cameras up, but I can't get back to the trailer yet. I want to stay still. I'm not seeing anything. Every now and again in this game, it sounds like the only thing that I can reference is in Jurassic Park when the T-Rex stomps, it's kind of like that and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a telltale sign that the creature's in the area. In the area. Oh, it's becoming daytime. Okay, so I've decided. I don't think the creature is active during the day. If it is, it's very rare that you're going to run into him because I've been playing this now for an hour and 14 minutes and I've not seen this thing once during the daytime at least I can't remember seeing it at daytime anyway so I think what I'm gonna do is go back up to the swamp and see if anything's changed what I think would be cool about this game is if you see telltale signs that the creature's been there maybe like I think bears do this but like scratch a tree so you see signs of it being there or maybe like destruction in certain parts like with the cabin and stuff that's why I'm heading up that way it's active during the day it's active during the day. Every time I talk about it, it seems to let out that roar. But we're going to go up to the swamp anyway, because I want to see, again, if anything has changed. So, which way are we headed? This way. But I wanted to tell you guys about a documentary, which I think you guys might enjoy. Based on what you guys are saying, and obviously this kind of game, you guys should watch something called The Russian Yeti, if you guys can get your hands on it. I think it was first on Discovery, and I think it's an interpretation of... A mystery that's not been able to be solved in around 50 years it's basically about some hikers I think nine in total that go to a remote part of Russia I think the area is actually called the Dyatlov Pass and it's renowned for being very difficult to cross because of the conditions like sub-zero temperatures and stuff but bear in mind guys these were all very experienced hikers from roughly around that area but the documentary follows the mysteriousness of that they all were killed in really weird ways like I don't really want to give too much away but you guys can see what I'm getting at they point to or there is a theory behind that they could have ran into a Russian Yeti which there's a lot of stories about in that area they even go and see a tribe which I think at one point they call it an ancient tribe which has been there for thousands of years you know through through family members and, and, and bloodlines and stuff they even th I think they even said that they practice cannibal rituals, but they were called the Mansi, and they give the name to the creature as the Menk. And it has a lot of religious theory and belief behind it. Let me just get a trap out here just in case. Shit, I don't have any more traps. I didn't pick the two up from the trailer. Okay, let's see if anything's changed up top of this thing. I know there's a rifle in there, and I think there's a trap too. Yeah, there's a trap up there. But... 
This documentary, guys, is definitely worth a watch if you're kind of into this sort of thing. If you guys have seen it, you'll know what I mean. But what's really weird about it, again, I try not to give too much away, but the mysteriousness of how the hikers were killed. And you can go and do your research on this, it's still a mystery to this day. This is an interpretation of what somebody thinks might have happened, or a possibility of something that could have happened based on how the bodies were found. I'll give you guys an example. I think that one of the ladies, there was two ladies in the group, I think one of the ladies was called Luftmiller, and her body was found completely different to the rest of them. There were some bodies that were found miles away, they, it looks like there was some kind of... It looks like there was some kind of panic or, you know, some kind of fight because all the hikers had bedded down for the night to go to sleep and then all their bodies were found pretty much what you would sleep in, like miles away from their camp too. But Luft Miller, or Lud Miller, and I apologize if I butchered that name, was found, get ready for this, without her tongue and her eyeballs. Now you guys can't tell me that somebody dying of natural causes. And the first thing that I thought when I saw the documentary was, well, that's pretty simply explained. Like, if the lady had died, there could have been, you know, wildlife in the area. And obviously, if if the wildlife isn't as big, it's not going to tear chunks out of it like a, you know, a lion or a wolf would in certain parts of the world. But it was the, it was just how weird everything was explained. Like the injuries that the people had. They were crushed, almost like a constriction, almost like a snake would, with such force that it broke ribs, broke spines, broke hips, but there was no impact injuries on the outside of their bodies. It's such a cool documentary to watch, but I do want to give you a bit of advice. If you are of a younger viewer, it's probably going to be nightmare fuel, so just be advised. I'm not condoning anyone of a younger age to go and watch something which is going to terrify them, but... If you guys are interested in this stuff, it's definitely worth a watch. I thought it was really interesting. Alright, you guys can see this. I'm not hearing anything. And this is kind of what lo long stints of the game's like. you kind of just left with your thoughts and like kind of making shapes out in the woods, hoping that you're not going to get attacked by this thing. Let's see if we can climb this. I've been making a habit of this. I'm trying to climb the rocks. Let me get on top of there. I actually found it interesting too from the comments. A lot of you guys actually said, in fact, I think it, this was more one of the more popular ones. After I asked a question in the previous episode saying that if you had, you know, a team that you could send out looking for something that you were interested in finding, a lot of you guys actually said that you would take an underwater expedition team. And I think that's actually a really good shout because as I've said a billion times before, whenever I play a game that involves the ocean, that bitch has not been explored. So I think the chances of finding something down there, whether it be one thing or another, would be pretty high. I don't know if it's capable of going to certain depths yet. I think we're still very like in the early stages of being able to get that technology so we can go deep into the ocean. But I think that was actually a really good shout. Some of you guys actually said that you would go and try and find the Sasquatch, but not with a big team, with a smaller team. So it's not as to alert the creature, which again, really cool theories and really cool stories that you guys would use as to come up with a way to launch an expedition team what are the chances I've just found the cave again and then I've just heard it I think that did make me jump. I think... Oh wait, what the fuck? There's a body in here now. And there's two bits of medicine. Oh shit, I really... Does it mark it on the map? Yeah, it does. Alright, I'm going to go back to the trailer. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to try and set up a trap here. That's so cool how there's a body in here because it looks like... It's moved it inside. Like, you can see it's been feeding on deer and stuff. I'm going to try and stick to what I've been doing, like, without the flashlight. It's terrifying, but it seems to be working. The creature isn't attacking. I need to get back to camp. So, which way do we need to head? I think I'll be able to show you guys, too, the, the actual watchtower that I fell off before. Like I said before, there's like a... 
It's almost like a, th a banging, like a thud of it walking. And it, I thought that would be like a clue. It's, it's in the area. And then every now and again, you'll hear like a snarl in the distance. I heard it in episode one. All right, where we at? Is this, yeah, this is the watchtower that I found. I actually didn't know, but I think the watchtowers have lights on them too. I got to the top of this thing, tried to jump off, and that's how I lost health. I'm not going to do it again, but I want to show you guys, like... Look, is that noise? What is that noise? He's over there. This game really needs a crouch button. I know I've said it before, but it really needs a crouch button. There's something about being able to crouch down and feel like, you know, you're in a stealth situation. It would be more terrifying too, because if you could crouch down in like the bushes and stuff to hide from it. All right, you know what? I want to bring it in. Where are you at? Is that the lake? Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I think... I was going back to the camp for a trap, and I think this one has one. Okay, okay, we don't need to go back. Going back to the story that I was saying, I think the actual place is called Colat. Again, I'm probably saying the name wrong, but... I think I remember there being a game on Steam called Cola. In fact, I think I might have even played it, but it was such a long time ago. I've seen screenshots um, of the of the actual title, but I don't know what type of game it is. If anyone's played that game, if it has any reference to the hikers, the Dyatlov incident, then please let me know because I think I'd be interested in playing that either on the channel or either on stream, just to see if it has any reference to the actual documentary that I watched. Alright, so where should we place this? Can we get it, like, smack bang in the middle? We can. We can get it right in the middle. Come and get your dinner. Might as well use them. Okay, so I've just opened the Bigfoot survival guide and I think there's a bit of a clue in this thing. It says, for hunting the Bigfoot, right at the very bottom on the right hand side, the skin is very thick and it can be penetrated at least 16 bullets. There's a few mistakes in this which doesn't really matter but it says there 16 bullets. So I need to work out how many bullets that we have in total. We have 40 bullets. I think that's what that says there. So it only takes 16 to bring this thing down. That is if you don't get bitch slapped by it first. If you guys are wondering, I'm still in the cave. I just decided to wait it out for a little bit. I've heard it a few times, but nothing. Nothing coming close. I don't want to get out of this place. Fucking cobwebs. Let's go. So I think what I'm going to do... 16 bullets. That's actually quite a lot. Let me think about this. So, I've got the cameras over at the... It does say in the book as well that it's probably better to spread the traps out and stuff, which I kind of knew anyway. I just wanted to put them closer together because I wanted more of a chance of trapping it. More than once. I need to try and work out the creature's pattern too. If you guys were worried as well, did that make me jump? That scared the living bejesus out of me then. I was going to open the survival book again while I was on my way back to base. And then I heard it and then I just spammed the keyboard because I panicked so hard. <laughs> Which way is it? Over this way? 
Like, even though we've got this thing... Oh, he's gone right across the river again. There's no way I can keep up with that. Even though I've got this thing with a tracker bullet, like, you guys can see, it's still so hard to see them. What would be a little bit helpful, and this is something that's not really needed to be added, but I'm seeing it as in terms of this. Is there anything up this one? Yeah, there was a torch on this one too, or, or a light on this one. I did come up here before. I'm going to take that. But some kind of grid pattern, so I'd know the range. Because even though... Wait, has it disappeared? I don't get that. At certain times, the, the track bullet disappears quicker than others. Can you get across that? I've completely turned myself around. I'm on the opposite side of the lake. Alright, I need to get back to the cave. Holy shit, I would never do this. Let's go. What the fuck was that? I've just spilt my fucking drink everywhere. Okay, I can honestly tell you guys, that was probably the worst fucking jump scare I've ever had in a game. Did lightning hit the tree? I'm not joking, you guys. Like, to my right side, it's just covered in drink. Like, my bottle was knocked over that you probably heard it. <laughs> it's just... Oof. That was fucking loud. That's the only explanation I can think of. Did lightning hit this tree? It's completely fucking fried it. I'm still on my way back to the cave so I can get that health. And, like, in between... Just so I could take a couple of seconds to get a drink and stuff. I put the drink to my mouth, started drinking, and then that fucking noise happened. Oh, my little heart can't take much more of this. Let's get back to that cave. Okay, so we made it back to the cave. I wanted to ask you guys a question. Can we get trapped in these things? I imagine that would be like a... A really awkward curveball if the developers have put that in the game. I kind of want to test it, but I don't want to get trapped in it. Because if we get trapped, I think that might end the game. I've been avoiding these things, like you can get trapped in them, but I don't know if you can. Either way, alright, let me know guys in the comments. I need to get some health, so... You can see, bottom left, we need some healing. There we go. Pick this up, and we've still got one more there. Poor guy. Alright, I think what I want to do, because... I'm going to leave it there. I want to get back to the trailer. I want to see if there is an animation where Bigfoot attacks the trailer. I know you guys have said that it happens and it's fucking terrifying. And even though my little heart can't handle much more of this episode. Fucking tree. I'm going to head back because I want to see what happens. I'll bring you guys back if anything changes. So I'll see you guys in a second. I'm very aware as well that we only get a certain amount of the uh, track bullets. Like, these things don't respawn. Right, maybe it's a little bit shy from coming in too close to the camp. Okay, so I was going to try and chase it down, but I think I want to see what it does when it comes back to the trailer. It's just over there at the minute. If I can get back in the trailer and see this thing on the CCTV. Which one are you next to? You're next to camera four. Anybody see anything? right next to camera four.
There he is. So he's going that way through the tree line. So if I do this... There he is! Oh shit! Okay, we definitely got some shots in him. You can see that. Did you guys see that? He knocked the fucking gun off the trailer. Where did, where did it go? Okay guys, so it's been a fairly decent chunk of time now since I've last seen the thing, like all of a sudden it was really aggressive, like attacking the trailer, trying to kill me, I was trying to place traps down, I actually did have more bait inside the, uh, inside the trailer too, so I've thrown that down with the extra traps that I had, but there's just nothing now. Absolute silence, there's just, what's that over there? Wait, what's that? that one of the cameras okay I'm just trying to look for anything out out the ordinary with these things I very rarely use them I think it's actually quite tough to see but there's just nothing and there hasn't been for at least I'd say close to 20 minutes so I don't know if it's like is it becoming daytime too I actually haven't tried this yet this is probably going to be the last thing that I try to try and get the creature in. You guys can see this though. There's just nothing. Those flares are so fucking sick. We managed to get it down quite a lot of health. Like, if, if it comes back, I think I could do a lot more to it. But because I don't have any of the track bullets, or I didn't tag it with any of the track bullets, then I just no I don't know where to look. I could keep wandering the forest for hours and hours and hours, but God that was so cool when it attacked the trailer. Like when when it came the second time, I think it actually charged the thing and that's why you saw that the gun fell off the top, the bottles were flying around everywhere. This game's got a lot more like detail than I thought it would have. I'm actually looking forward to when they release the other side to the game. I think this is Jasper Park. I think there's going to be like a glacial one too. Maybe we can find a yeti or something. I don't know. Maybe that unlocks when you find the Bigfoot. It's going to give it one last shot. And piss it off and bring it in. You guys definitely saw that though. It was getting more aggressive. I've never seen it around the camp as much as this. But there's just been no sign of it for, like I say, close to 20 minutes. So... I think, guys, I'm going to end it here. We found two more of the uh, of the Taurus. Anything? I really want to take you down, Bigfoot. Just nothing. But yeah, we found two more of the Taurus. We found out a little bit more, too. I did manage to place a trap in the cave. I think I saw a comment from someone saying to put a CCTV camera down. So maybe I'll do that when I get a little bit of help. But I think it would be cool if I brought somebody in on this. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So for now, guys, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you all in the next one.